Hi, my name is Julie Sebi. This video is an accompaniment to a blog post on inspecting Spotfire CSS classes that can be found on my website, bigmountainanalytics.com, using the link shown on the screen. This is video two of two. My first video showed a very simple example of inspecting CSS classes, but now I want to show you where it can get a bit more complicated. I start off with a very simple objective. Figure out which CSS classes control the X and Y axis selectors and the X and Y axis labels. In trying to figure that out, I discovered several very important things about CSS classes in Spotfire. First, particular pieces of the application might be controlled by more than one class. Second, some parts of the application are rendered at runtime and are not configurable. Third, there's a quick and easy way to figure out what a particular CSS class controls, and I'm going to show you that in our very first example. So let's use the inspector to review CSS classes, and we'll turn it on in the Tools menu, and I'll take just a little bit of time to resize it so that you can see the inspector and the bar chart on the right. I'm going to click the button to turn it on, and we're going to start on the x-axis. And if I hover over the x-axis selector, you'll see that the very first thing highlighted is a CSS class SF element text box. So let's apply that and I'm going to show you a quick trick to understanding what a given class controls just by adding a little bit of background color. So I'm going to turn this off and I have the code that I want already in my clipboard and I'm going to paste it. And as you can see, all I'm doing with this is adding a white background color. And when I hit save, all of the pieces that are impacted by this CSS class turn white. And so now I can very easily see what SF element text box will control. And as you can see, it's controlling more than just my X axis selector and my labels are not impacted. So let's keep inspecting. I'm going to close this and turn my inspector back on. As you can see, I'm moving my mouse around a little bit. It's really changing what is showing up in the inspector. Directly on top of the axis selector, that's SF element text box. But if I move outside it a little bit, now we can see different classes. SFPC first, SFPC last. So now let's use those two and see what we get by modifying SFPC first and SFPC last. I'll close the inspector and we'll just modify the code that we have. And if I hit save, now I'm not impacting all of the titles. I'm impacting both of the axis selectors or actually all of the selectors in this given visualization. And if I change this to last and hit save, SFPC first and SFPC last, as far as I can see here, are controlling the same things. Now, this still doesn't quite meet my initial objective of controlling just the x-axis selector or just the y-axis selector. So let's keep inspecting. Okay. Now I'm going to hover over my x-axis labels. And here I can see another Spotfire CSS class called SFPC Bottom. And it doesn't really appear to change a whole lot until I get into the entire image. I still see SFPC Bottom. And now if I go to the Y axis, I see SFPC Left. So let's work with those two. We're going to edit the HTML. And we're going to do SFPC bottom. And I'm going to hit save. And I can see that SFPC bottom is impacting the axis label and the axis selector. And if I do SFPC left and I hit save, that is my y axis label and my y axis selector. And now I'm going to copy and paste in some code that is changing the font family. And what we're going to see happen here is that the font family is applied in the y-axis selector but not in the label. So I'm going to hit save. And there you saw that font family change on the selector but not in the labels. 
And that's because some parts of the application are rendered at runtime and aren't configurable. And that's what happens in this case. We can configure the y-axis but not the label because the label is rendered at runtime. So just to quickly summarize what we learned, different pieces of the application might be controlled by more than one class. Some parts of the application are rendered at runtime and are not configurable. And you can use that little trick I showed you of configuring the background color to understand what a CSS class is going to impact. I hope you found this useful. Please check out BigMountainAnalytics.com. Thank you.